name is Christiana Pena, and I'm going to be talking today about social media as a way that you either as a private citizen with a passion project or if you're working with your community group, neighborhood group, you know, how are you able to use these kinds of tools to build a constituency? How are you able to mount a campaign using some of the different assets that Lintz helped you kind of walk through uh, how to create? Um, and my personal experience with social media just came from working in historic in historic preservation here in the city for nonprofit groups where you have no budget. There's there's no money, right? So if you want to get people to pay attention to you, you need to use and leverage as many of the tools you have available as free as you can make it happen, right? So we're going to be focusing on those kinds of things today. So we're not going to be necessarily talking about web design or news outlets, uh, blogs that other people manage. We're going to just be focusing on what is it that's within your with, that you can have within your control that you can control the voice and the content that you're putting out. Um, so I'm going to use Circa Old Houses as my um, <coughs> excuse me as my model. Uh, that this is a website that has been around for I guess we've been doing it for about four or five years now. It was actually started by an alum of the Greenwich Village Society for Historic Preservation, and she made it as really a response to the the idea that there are all these kinds of real estate websites out there, Zillow and Trulia and all these kinds of things, but they weren't really speaking to an old house loving audience. So Cirque is really intended to fill that space. Um, we have built our entire community strictly on social media. I mean, it's been uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and a bit of uh, Google+, Plus, which we'll kind of talk about all of those. Um, but it's really a great example of how just with thoughtful timing, thoughtful content, really thinking about the look and the feel, the tone that we want this, this site to have, um, all of those things have really been helpful or really been key for us to create this kind of constituency. Um, so feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, I'm going to try to be kind of swift just because I, what time are we trying to wrap ish? Uh, 7.30. Oh, we've got plenty of time. I'll go real slow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is our website. There is also an app. Um, next, please. So the first thing, obviously, with any of these, with photography, with your social media, you need to think about what are your goals with this. Are you trying? Are you just trying to let people know you're around? We just we're a neighborhood organization. We exist, and we just want people to know. Is it more specific that we want members? Is it even more specific that we have a campaign and we need signatures? Figure out what your goal is. For Circa, it was building a community so that we had a broad audience to encourage people to want to list their old house on this website so that we could say, by listing your house on Circa, you'll have 80,000 eyeballs on Facebook, 20,000 people on Instagram, and all those kinds of things. So figure out what your goals are going to be, and that will help you to figure out which platforms are going to be key for you. So think about who you, you know who you are, you know what your purpose is and your goals and, your, and what you, who you want your audience to be, but think about who else is kind of occupying that same space as you. Um, so for Circa, it was thinking about what are other websites, blogs, platforms that people go to because they're inspired by old houses, because they want to buy old houses, they want to fix up old houses, or they're just into design and they appreciate the kind of thing, the, this design kind of community that we're, that we're developing. Look at those so that you have kind of a sense of what, what the expectation is, not just in terms of look and feel, but also tone, uh, regularity, how often new content is coming. Just know what kind of expectation other people might have of you based on the people that already you consider to be your, your peers. Most important is to don't overdo it, right? Everyone always thinks, well, we have we have this organization, so we got to be on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and we probably have Pinterest, and I think I should be on Snapchat and, and all these things, right? But you really want to be thoughtful about what do you have the capacity to do first. Um, you want to make sure that you're building a really reliable expectation among your audience. So you don't want to have all the platforms humanly possible, but anytime I go to check, okay, well, what's new with Circa, the last post was three months ago, or the last post was a year ago. Like, What's the, why should I follow you? Why should I encourage other people? This content stale, it's old, I'm done. So think about what you have the capacity to do on a regular basis. And we'll talk a little bit about how you can kind of expand your capacity with different scheduling tools and other things like that. Um, also think about the content you have. How is it going to be best featured? So for Circa, well, I, I will say for, for everyone, regardless of what kind of your your community content is, I would encourage you to be on Facebook simply because it's the largest community of people. So it's just where the most eyes are at all times. So there's certainly 
benefit to being there. But a lot of the other platforms favor and enhance and are, are best kind of featuring certain kinds of content, right? So for example, on Instagram, if you're looking to, if your historic neighborhood, your historic district is looking to build constituency and you have all these great photographs from your survey, maybe you really want to be on Instagram because it's all focused on your visuals. Um, maybe your purpose instead is to, you have a, a, a campaign you're building, you want people to be sending around links for a petition. So it's all about driving traffic to another location where there's a larger kind of explanatory resource. Twitter might be the right thing for you. Um, so think about what your content is and what your goals are and how those things meet at, at these various platforms. What? Sorry, I can put that down. So for Circa, we're most active on Facebook, like I said, because it's the largest community, and Instagram just because we have lots of pretty pictures of pretty old houses. Um, we have done a lot of uh, campaigns that rely on certain built-in social media tools such as hashtags. Um, so d just, again, depending on what your goals are and what your content is, that might be something that works for you too. Okay. I have a good question yeah. hashtags. Somebody like that. Like Do you want to go back? Um, this is just a general question. Yeah. Um, how do you know if it has been used before and is it okay if it's been used before but not recently? Sure, and sure. Something like that seems like something that maybe somebody else might use. I'm yeah. Related to your campaign, so it is always, yeah, it's after always after super that. important to, depending on what your content and your kind of mission is, do, do a little, I mean, just, just search it, right? Just do a little bit of research as to who maybe has already used that hashtag. I had one, oh my god, I've had some really unfortunate hashtag instances. Because um, you just never know, right? We, we, so search it, see what you see. Sometimes it'll be someone else has used this, but it hasn't been active by anyone else in any kind of similar sphere for like a year. So go for it, whatever. Um, but sometimes you'll see, oh, someone's using this, and maybe this is all like a demo company that crushes houses, like literally. So you would not want to use that. Um, but also, I would, incur I would steer you away from, I mean, a lot of people will say, we're having a campaign, we should have a hashtag. We should just have one. But before you just start creating hashtags, because all you have to do is type it. You type it, it exists. You've created a hashtag, right? It's that simple. But no one else knows about it, right? So half your battle is now you're simultaneously forcing yourself to first people have to know who we are and what we're talking about, and then also know we have this great custom hashtag. So in the early days, if you're trying to establish your kind of foothold in your online platforms, uh, uh, a good thing to keep in mind is to do a little looking about and see what are existing hashtags that other people are using. Let me use a couple of those and insert my own hashtag as well so that as people are searching established things like hashtag old houses, hashtag dream house, those kinds of things, they're also finding hashtag circle old houses. So the two start to overlap and as you're building your cache of all of your custom hashtags, it's connecting you to all these other things as well. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you. All right, supporting. <laughs> All right, next. So we're on number four. Uh, work your brand. So decide what your brand is. And I know when we're talking about community groups or campaigns, people don't want to think about it as a brand because it sounds so dirty and corporate. But you really do need to think about your your uh, your the the identity that you're putting forward as a package that you want to have consistency so that people understand that it's something that. Um, is thoughtful, you, you're not just doing this willy-nilly, that it has kind of, um, you know, a, 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 a plan, and, you know, it's not just kind of picking and going as it, as it is. And that's something that we had to figure out a lot for, for Circa was, you know, is our brand, our, what's our tone, you know, are we talking about ourselves in the first person, is it all about us and as we experience these old houses, or is it more kind of the communal we, we're all just so excited about old houses? Um, is it super formal and professional? Is it very low key and familiar? So think about that. And especially if you're gonna be, as we do for Circa, there are two of us who manage this content. So we wanna make sure that we're both on the same page so that it's not so obvious, oh, well, Christiane is posting today because that sounds like her. Well, Elizabeth is clearly talking about herself now. If you're gonna be sharing responsibilities for your social media presence with other people in your group, make sure you have an agreement among yourselves. You know, who are we, what's our voice, and stay consistent with that. Same with visuals. Uh, you wanna be thinking about, you know, do we have a really specific look, aesthetic, that we wanna be pushing forward? Maybe it's already been established by someone who designed your website and you're just kinda of continuing that look. Um, maybe it is really hodgepodge. Whatever you decide it's gonna be, just plan those things out in advance because it just makes the overall kind of 
family of channels that you're establishing as people pop from one thing to the other it all is uh, consistent and just is, is of, a, of a larger piece so we did that with um, using Pinterest as just kind of a mood board exercise and then use that to establish some of the different filters that we use we're really consistent about the fonts things like that especially important is to think about as you as you've decided these things you know what's your look what are your what's your kind of color palette if you are you doing fonts are you no color no fonts it's all just great images that's fine but make sure that you're uh, researching and and sizing and cropping all of your content optimally for each of your channels you don't have to write this down all you literally have to do is google social media specs 2017 any year just put the year in and you will always find all the accurate measurements. So it'll tell you, you know, for your Twitter, so this is called your cover photo, your profile photo. So for every channel, it'll tell you the ideal cover and profile, and it's different between, so don't think that you're gonna crop it. For example, Twitter is, is narrow and really wide, and Facebook is like two-thirds the width. So your focal area for those two different platforms is gonna be completely different when you're cropping. And it's really important, because I wouldn't want to have all this great content, and then you land on this site, and I, maybe I have like a really great chorus, right? but then I don't, I don't pay attention to what the ideal measurements are and I crop it, and so it looks like one of Lynn's poor examples of my corners is totally gone because I didn't have the right specs. So think about those things. Does that, does that, and that particularly applies to what you were talking about with the cover photo and the profile photo. Um, not so much about the individual um, photos in the posts. Yes, not the individual photos in the posts much, although those, same thing. When you do this Google search for just social media specs, um, look, like, so, social Media Hub, I think, is the one that I currently use, but really you can use whatever. Uh, and, but it has a, a, a really great just rundown of Facebook, and it's your cover, your profile, if you're a share, like ideal photo, I, ideal share link, ideal video, like it right. shows all the different post types, so no, matter, no matter what you want to share and what kind of actionable you know, items you want to be presenting to your audience, it'll always give you tips on how you want to in advance size all that stuff. Because that's the worst thing when you work so hard on a blog post or a petition, and then you put that photo up, and it's just like oh, it's capturing like the, only that corner, and right. that's the important part, you know. So make sure that you're 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 doing as much as you can to make it perform the way you need it to do. Can I ask you another question? Uh -huh. um, uh, one of the things when we were when we post um, on Facebook, I I I I'd like when the post doesn't make you have to click more, right? To, okay. to see more of the words. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to write a short um, post, sure. uh, right? Like I'm like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then yeah. before you know it, it says you know, more. You actually yeah. have to click on it to read the rest of it. And that might be, um, uh, less people might be doing that, right? As they're like, they're scrolling. Yeah, and I couldn't find anywhere like you know how many words and character cuts off. Yeah, yeah. Was it, it should be you, it should be on that same. I'll I'll double check because if it if it's not, but it should be that that the the social media spec should be talking about dimensions and word count as well. Okay. So if not, I'll try to find one that does. Okay. And they and they they've been talking about. I don't know if it's going to happen, but you know, famously, Twitter for the longest time was limited to to 140 characters. Then a year ago or whatever, they opened it up so that your um, links did not take away from that character count, which made a huge difference. Right. And now I think they're going to expand it to like 220 characters or something like that. So soon Twitter will just be Facebook. I mean, that's not right. But anyway, um, next. Um, so beyond just your primary images of your cover photo and your profile photo, you can also customize and brand some of the additional assets that are happening. For example, here on your Facebook page, you can uh, customize buttons and things like that. Again, that's all on your general social media specs that, uh, that you can Google. I'll circulate it when we circulate the PDF at the end. But anytime you have those opportunities to just bring it all together so it looks like you put extra thought here. Like this organization really is on top of it. They care. They're tending to this. I, there's, they're worth looking into, right? They're worth following. Next. And uh, the one thing, oh, sorry. You can put on, Go back. Your, on your profile on Facebook or account on the other. Uh, well, so you can, so I think that actually now Facebook, this is probably a dated image, the, 
so they're a little narrower, but you do have your, you can customize your menu on the left-hand column of your page. Actually, in some views, it probably shows up at the top. But you can customize the order, so you can have um, newsletter sign up, you can have your Twitter, your Instagram, you can pick and choose which um, widgets you want in this area, and then you can customize those. Oh, can I say something about Facebook that I've noticed that happens um, sometimes with uh, neighborhood organizations or sure. whatever? Um, folks will s make their Facebook page just like a personal page, and they mm -hmm. don't realize that um, that's different than a Facebook uh, page. Uh, well, Facebook right. now has required, I mean, they, they, I think they've had it for a while, but now when you go to Facebook, if you want to have a, they, there are, there are, uh, individual personal pages, like we all have profiles, right? Like, so we all have profiles, but organizations have pages, and you have to, now Facebook does not allow uh, an organization to have a non-organizational or cause page because it requires, um, I forget, they, like you have to like assign it like gender and birth date and all these things that don't exist for a cause or an organization versus an individual. So they do right. try to segment it, but right. And it does change some of the settings and things that are open to you. Right. But you want you want to be a page anyway. Right. Definitely. You yeah. want to be. I just know that a lot of people have not done it that way. And yeah. then in order to have followers, then they have to you have to friend each other. And it's right. Like, that's that's like true. Not yeah. That avenue to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's true. Is that if you were to inadvertently make the mistake of making your community's group a profile page then it changes your security and privacy settings so that people can't just follow you kind of willy-nilly necessarily. So that's a good point too. Thanks. So the one thing that a lot of people will, for, will forget though, when you do all this thoughtful cure, you know, creation of all your different channels, don't forget to actually put icons and links on your actual web page, if you have one. I mean, for some small groups, it might be that your only digital presence is your social media channels, and that might totally be fine. Not every group needs a website immediately. But if you have one, don't forget to connect everything and link it all together, okay? Uh, so number five is mapping your content. Uh, depending on your group, depending on your goals, it's really important to plan ahead, right? And especially, again, if there are multiple people doing it. So like I said, for myself, there, or for Circa, there are two of us working on content at any given time, so we use shared Google Docs to really help us keep a sense of what's going up when, what kind of content, time, all that stuff. So at any time, either one of us can dip in and say like, okay, this is, we have these themes happening on Tuesday, these listings are posting, all those. So there are, so use those tools to help make sure that, you know, you're not both posting at the same time. So on Tuesday at five, three things go up and the next two days are completely dead. Uh, in, in, so, well, I guess mostly just, well, in Facebook, um, you can, schedule all, all, all of this stuff in advance, which is obviously ideal. I mean, we don't spend all day every day scheduling all this content across our channels. We usually have a couple of days or times throughout the week where we're just focusing on posting this. So I can sit you know, on a Sunday afternoon and do a whole week's worth of posts so that it'll just roll out automatically on these channels. And even though there are a lot of third-party management apps, and we'll look at a couple here that are great for pushing content out to Twitter, pushing content out to Instagram, stuff like that, they all do support Facebook, but we tend to, we tend to use Facebook's just native scheduling tool because it makes for better um, stats. I mean, it, we, we, we use the built-in analytics in Facebook, um, so it's all in there, yeah. <laughs> so all you have to do is when you're when you're scheduling when you're just in your normal page view and you're just typing your normal post in normally in the bottom right hand corner it would say publish but there's also a little blue drop down arrow that says schedule so you can schedule it there as far into the future you can even backdate stuff if you know something happened and you didn't catch it but you want to make sure it kind of lands in the historical record in the right order so you can control all of that there and then within your insights which it just lives at the top of your dashboard when you're in your page, you can go, go back and look at, you know, what does that whole queue look like, move things around, reschedule, put it back to drafts, delete it, you can do all that good stuff. So the, the tool that we use to manage Circa um, outside of Facebook, at least for Twitter and Google+, Plus, is Hootsuite. Um, but there are a lot of these things. I mean, they're, we've used Buffer in the past. I mean, it's oftentimes we're just using whatever is free because we have very minimal resources to do it. And a lot of these will allow you free up to a certain number of posts per month. 
Um, Instagram only within the last year or so started allowing third party applications to schedule. Uh, so we use an app called Later to do Instagram posts. So it gets to be a little cumbersome in terms of we're doing Facebook directly in Facebook, we're doing Instagram and Later, and we're doing some of these other things in Hootsuite. But for us, it's just the the ability that each one of the each one how they're, each one is tailored to the different channels helps us to analyze that content later in the way that we most prefer. So that's for us, it's worth doing it that way. So. Number seven is advertise, and I know that we all want to do as much as we can for free, and that's the goal with all of this, right? But unfortunately, especially now that Facebook has bought Instagram, and those Facebook obviously is the largest platform, we've already talked about Instagram for a lot of our purposes is a really desirable channel. There's just so much content that the way that these algorithms are built, that no matter how many people you accrue in your, in your community of followers, it's not possible for Facebook or Instagram now to serve all of your content to every single one of those people. They're just all getting inundated with too much stuff. So Instagram picks and chooses based on some algorithm that none of us will ever understand. Uh, who's gonna get what? And so not so even if you have you know 3,000 followers, you might put up a post and it might only get like 23 people viewed it. And you're like, that doesn't make any sense. How are only 23 of my 3,000 people viewing this? I don't believe that. But it's just because all those 3,000 people are following 500 pages each, so they can't all see everything that all those pages are showing them. So Facebook picks and chooses, and anytime you're using something within Facebook that's a boosted service, let's say, like having an ad, Facebook will just give preference to all of your content. It doesn't mean it's boosting all of your, yeah. It doesn't mean it's boosting all of your content, it's just you're performing slightly better. But that being said, this isn't meaning that you're going to need to throw like five thousand dollars at this project. You can, yeah, you can do a lot and get a and get a good return on your investment using, you know, try try fifty bucks for a month, try twenty bucks for a week. You know, the best thing about these is all of the um, purchase models are called are called cost per click. So you only pay for what you actually get. So if you're having an ad campaign where you can target your demographic, age, gender, education, geography, interests, all those kinds of things, target all of that, and in a week's time, if you only get three people to click on it, you only pay for three people's clicks, and those per clicks are a high cost value. It's not, it's not that you're spending all your $20 for three clicks, maybe you only are getting those three, and so at the end of that ad period, whatever you defined it to be yourself, you can either decide, okay, well, we clearly didn't define our ad group well enough. We need to go back and rethink, you know, did we, do we need to just, you know, do we need to narrow down our age group? Do we need to have a specific, more specific geography? Maybe we were too broad, whatever it might be. That's one of the really great things about doing this kind of advertising is it's so customizable and it's so immediately responsive based on what you're seeing happen, what you think you might want to try instead. And number eight, which is the most important thing is as you're doing all of this, actually go to the next one, is analyzing it. You know, you can have all this great content, you can advertise and do all this stuff, but if you're not taking a moment to kind of pause and say, well, who's actually looking at this? You know, do we, do we, Circo was founded on the idea that it's, you know, people of kind of your mid, mid 30s through your 40s who are loving these old houses and ready to purchase something and you're socially savvy and you're into design. So is that, the age grade, the age range that's actually focusing on, on Circa. And so you can see here, so top is women, bottom is men, going across here. So this, the, the largest groups right here, are like, I think that's like the 30 to 60, something like that. So that's what we can see that by and large, Circa's audience are women, I mean, by a huge margin, um, in this age group. So when we're doing our ads, it makes more sense for us, sorry guys, you're gone. We're just gonna push all our money to these women in this age group because they're the ones who have already demonstrated interest in our content. And so they're the ones that we can count on more than anyone else to be ambassadors and to help push our content to new people. Um, we can also look at geography. I mean, Circa has a national focus. So for us, it's interesting to kind of see who's paying attention to our content and you know, adjusting accordingly. I'm gonna guess for most of your projects it would be a more hyper-local thing, but you never know. You might be surprised by seeing some of the engagement you see here. I'm getting near the end. Um, you can also, and th this is all exclusive to Facebook right now, you can also look at uh, times of day when your uh, content is most active among your users. So for example, we always call this the, the blue whale because 
obviously. So I think right around here is about like eight, nine o'clock, six to nine o'clock is right here. So you can see that for us between six and really like eight and nine is when we have on average the most activity. So that's when we're going to put the most important thing for that day. Maybe it's someone who paid extra for their listing or that's actually something that we can offer as an enhanced um, service to someone versus you know 9 a.m. 7 a.m. things are really low so if you're trying to build membership if you're trying to get petitions on a signature you don't want to start your morning off at 7 a.m. with those important posts because they're just going to fall on deaf ears at least for us based on our our wheel here we want to push that stuff to later in the day um, so take some time as you have all this stuff to, to pause and look at that and shift and adjust accordingly uh, and this is just looking in at the back end of some of our um, posts on Facebook. You can see that we are, we're able to see for every individual post, and we can click into each one of these and see a little more detail. We can see how many people engaged, how many people clicked through, how many people forwarded on to somebody else. So we're able to understand over time how, how different content performs. So if we post something that's a link to somewhere else versus if we're posting just a photo, versus if we're posting a video, because we're, we're trying all kinds of things. And so as we're doing that, we want to get a better handle on what thing is going to be worth our time creating based on the engagement that we see in our followers. Next, I think we're getting near the end. That's it. OK. Well, I hope that's helpful. Um, I'd love to hear if anybody here, I mean, if, in addition to if you have questions that you've been ruminating on for Lynn, I mean, I'd love to hear if anyone is actively working on a campaign or a neighborhood project that you are specifically thinking about how could social media be a tool for you. Or maybe everyone's just generally taking it. <laughs> That's fine too. Do, uh, do people, I'd be interested who has a Facebook page. I mean, our civic association has one, but it's sort of, it's sort of in limbo. Okay. Because nobody was designated as being in charge of it. I don't know if any other people have experienced it. On a, like on a civic association level? Or, yeah, on any kind of local neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, I did, uh, it, on, I did it on ours, on Sunset the Sunset Park. Park Landmarks Committee. Yeah, we have a Facebook page. And it was, uh, uh, it was really good for when we needed to get people to show up at meetings. We needed to get them to, to pack the community board meetings and um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it didn't cost very much to run the, the ads. And um, really, uh, I mean, gosh, I mean like seven bucks or something. Yeah. Because it, it was, you know, I was targeting a small audience. Like it specifically yeah. needed to be like, you know, people in yeah. Brooklyn and in, in near this zip code kind mm -hmm. of thing. Right. Um, so yeah, we have it and I think it's, I think it's good. It's very useful. I think it depends too, you know, are you using it for a campaign, something that you want more people to be aware of, or are you doing it really just to kind of create a home base for, you know, is it 30 families? Is it, you know, many, 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 many blocks? How big is your constituency and your audience and what's the goal? If you really just need it to serve as kind of an internal sharing updates with one another, a Facebook page could be fine. You could also do a Facebook, a closed group, depending on, you know, how broad and public you want your information to be. Um, so just thinking about your audience and your goal is important. Anybody else? All right. Well, I hope you'll visit Circa. There are a lot of beautiful houses for sale. <laughs> whenever I post, I usually do it on the weekends when I'm watching TV. Whenever I do it, I always will find that the most amazing houses are in like Eureka Springs, oh. Alabama, or Arkansas, I think, <laughs> or like some crazy place in like Kentucky. I'm like, I'm going there. <laughs> so it's really good for that if that's what you need. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for Thank you. Thank you.